Trapping plays a very important role in modern-day wildlife management. Professional wildlife biologists monitor fur bearer populations to maintain a healthy and sustainable harvest of this important, renewable natural resource. Trapping provides recreation and income for licensed trappers across this country. Who's Your Trapper Outdoors is brought to you by Who's Your Trapper Supply. J3 Outdoors, manufacturer of the Hags Bracket and Body Trap Spring Clip, Leatherwood Creek Trapping Sense, Weeby Knives and Fur Handling Tools, HTS Productions, Who's Your Trapper Deer Sense, and Leatherwood Wildlife Art. All right, thanks for joining us for uh, episode two, season six of Who's Your Trapper Outdoors. On this episode, we'll be check day four on the Arkansas trap line. We will complete the uh, daily diary of the Arkansas line uh, over the next couple three shows and at that point then we'll go back to our chronological order of last season which will be uh, Michigan um, water trapping uh, with Trent Masterson and then we'll go to uh, South Dakota with Mark Steck um, and on his uh, coyote snare line and then we'll round out the season the uh, uh, season of Hoosier Trapper Outdoors with our uh, New Mexico trap line. So uh, um, anyways, I, I think you'll enjoy it. We've got a lot of diversity. Well, uh, while I'm at it, I'm gonna invite everyone uh, to the um, Chapter 7B for Takers of America Fall Rendezvous that is here at Who's Your Trapper Supply. It's always the last Saturday of September. This year will be September 30th, uh, 2017. It's a day full of great trapping demos. We've got a good, we've got a good um, um, in, list of instructors for our demos. We'll do them down at the creek, out, out here in the field. Uh, we'll have a great um, uh, great lineup for that. Uh, then also um, we'll have games for the kids. We'll have uh, coffee and donuts first thing in the morning. And then uh, for lunch, we have our famous um, uh, rendezvous stew that is made by Jim Mahoney. Uh, big big um, kettle over a fire. And then uh, typically a pulled pork lunch. And um, so like I said, every, everyone's welcome. If you're a trapper, a wannabe trapper, or just somebody interested in the outdoors, I think you'll you'll th find something that uh, uh, that you can appreciate and enjoy that day. It's just a good, fun, uh, relaxed day. So uh, it's all free. There's uh, no charge. The association does ask for a um, uh, kind of a free will donation for lunch, but um, other than that, uh, that's it. So everyone's welcome. Hope you enjoy the episode. check day four and this is kind of how things are uh, setting themselves up for the day so far we've got thunder uh thunder storms coming in got just heard uh, some thunder come through hadn't really rained too much yet set up against this log right here on this um fire trail and um whatever was working this set probably a gray fox came in from the back or whatever actually shoved the bark off the dead log here into the trap and and the trap fired off so not only do you have to be concerned about little pieces of rock filing your trap up <laughs> evidently you got to be worried about bark so this is a first for me in 40 some years of trapping but uh, uh, it just goes to show just how many variables and how many things can affect a situation and and um and as I've always said, we pride ourselves in showing you the, the good and the bad and all the in-between. So, um, uh, anyways, I don't know that you could avoid something like this. Um, you know, it's just one of them things. But, anyways, this, hopefully the rest of the check day four continues to improve. Uh, maybe not so much the weather, but maybe the catch. So, anyways, we'll, we'll, uh, 
see how it all plays out. Check day four. This is not the cat that we were looking for. <laughs> you got a grinner. Yep. Here's the set. We'll get it remade. Try and get out of here before all this rain starts coming on us. It's cracking. Yep. Spring yep. one. So, yeah, we'll hurry up and get it taken care of. Move. Keep moving. All right, check day four, and it's it's coming down. <laughs> we have caught one possum so far and a flipped off trap with bark in it. So uh, uneventful, wonderful, and the weather's just uh, continuing to deter deteriorate. So <laughs> according to the radar, we've got at least three or four hours of this, and then hopefully it's supposed to calm down a little bit. But uh, you know, we're just strapping, and you got to go. Uh, can't roll over and stay in bed or whatever. So just, this is the, just the way it is. So gotta take take uh, take it as it comes along. Anyways, we'll keep you posted as as the day progresses here. All right. Weeby, one of our sponsors, Mark Steck, uh, the product line of his. The um, as we said, we we are not compromising ourselves with um, with our sponsors. We uh, we're only going to take on sponsors of products that we believe in that we personally use. Uh, it offers uh, uh, excellent quality to the uh, industry. Anyways, the, we've we've talked about these in the past, and this is the Weeby Elite Fleshy Knife. This is an excellent knife. It's a little bit short, um, which was something that kind of struck me initially, but uh, um, man, it works great. It's, it's um, got a couple things going for it that I really like uh, over um, a lot of other fleshy knives. One is the square handle, so it doesn't roll in your hands. It's always important to keep that grease off of your hands or off your gloves so that you can get a good grip on, on the knife. It's probably impossible to eliminate it completely, so this square handle definitely helps with that issue. If you do find that you're getting a lot of grease on your hands, then I would get some paper towel, wipe them off, wipe your handles off, and then go on. But uh, uh, this, this definitely, uh, with that grip and that square handle, eliminates that rolling of the knife in your hand. The other thing is the back edge, the, the cutting edge. Man, that thing is sharp. I mean, it, it is... Um, uh, a very sharp, good, good fleshy knife, and then of course it's got the scraping edge. So um, I really can't say enough about this knife. We've we've um, certainly uh, used it um, last season as kind of our go-to. It was it was our go-to uh, knife in the back. And as you know, as a lot of you know, we're we're taxidermists, so we use these knives on on big hides, um, you know, as well as all the fur hides. So um, you know, excellent excellent quality knife. And it's right in there price-wise, um, very competitively priced for the quality of the knife. Um, can't go wrong. I've been a professional trapper for over 40 years, and in that time, I've skinned literally thousands of animals. I've learned that it doesn't matter how cool a knife looks on your hip. What really matters is sharpness and reliability. And that's why I created the Weeby Wicked Sharp line of replacement blade knives. These are knives that will quickly skin your critters without skinning your wallet. Visit WeebyKnives.com to get the new Monarch folding knife with three replacement blades for just $19.95. Weeby Knives, Wicked Sharp. On a, on a night like last night, with that cloudy, overcast, misty rain, this possum, that's uh, possum heaven. So I guess it holds true here as well. And I'm the one that has to get it out of the truck. Because you set the trap. Yep. <laughs> Nothing but possum so far on the line and connected on this coon right here. Um, caught a coyote at this location yesterday, remade it. And connected with that so at least we're heading in the right direction hopefully the coons start turning into gray fox and bobcats <laughs> well everybody we've caught four possums today and normally we'll catch four possums over the course of two or three seasons down here so yeah not usually like this yeah we just don't catch possums down here like this so at home last night would have been the night for every possum in the in the country to run uh which proved to be ca the case here as well and i'm sure that's just the way it is with possums, but anyways. Charlie, what do you think? He's got another possum, I can tell. <laughs> you can almost see it while like, well, he's in the way. That crazy. <laughs> Look at it, he knows it. <laughs> <laughs> this is the part for the course for this day right here. Oh man, possum three for Jake. <laughs> Nasty weather. He's not.
What do you got? <laughs> My third possum of the day. <laughs> no one else has caught a possum. What are you doing? I don't know. <laughs> you haven't caught anything good, and three possums have been caught, and it's still world for halfway done and it's uh, actually not quite halfway done and it's still pouring out rain so fun fun day take care of it there's the set the possum streak continues plus side of all this the rain is pretty much lifted we're just gonna start refreshing sets charlie's there and re urine and uh, maybe recover some of this that's been washed away. A lot of dirt holes got some standing water in them. We'll see how it plays out. Trapping products by J3 Outdoors, the most versatile and efficient trapping devices on the market. All right, question and answer this week. One question that we had um, was concerning Beaver Caster. If you could use this just straight up, add a set for an attractant, and certainly the answer is yes. I will say that Beaver Caster is um, something that has probably the greatest universal attractant to it um, that's out there. I mean, it's just an excellent um, attractant. You can use it a number of ways. Now, this is a piece of drive caster, and we've already ground all of our caster, and this just happens to be one little piece that came in late. So this is actually not a real good caster. It's not real plump. You can see that there's not a lot of um, caster uh, within the sacks here, um, but um, certainly still still worth um, using. Um, what we typically do, and you can, you can grind class, caster green, um, two, you don't have to dry it out, but uh, um, if you dry it out, typically what we do at this point is we will actually put this in some um, uh, warm water and uh, some glycerin or glycol. You can use uh, alcohol as well and let them actually plump up and then we'll grind them. Then um, you can use it as an ingredient or you can use it straight up. Certainly um, great on a predator uh, lure, fox, coyote. Um, and uh, bobcats, excellent attractant. If we use straight up caster, and a lot of times we do, we, we always use two different lures. So we've got a dirt hole, we'll put a little caster over here and we'll maybe, you know, put some fixing elixir there or, or finicky feline or whatever. But um, uh, it's very common for us to use a straight up caster. Typically we will use it in a liquid form. So what you can do to make a liquid form uh, is you grind your caster, put it in a jar, and um, you know, maybe 20% uh, of the jars got straight up caster in it. And then you can put um, glycol, glycerin. Um, I per personally prefer glycol over glycerin in that because it's, it's li more liquidy. Um, the, uh, or uh, you can even use like uh, vodka. Any of that stuff will work. Set it outside and it's kind of like making sun tea and that, that caster will absorb into that liquid. And then that's great up, great stuff uh, as an ingredient or, or works great straight up so you know just kind of a simple basic question uh, and there's a lot more that I can you can go into detail here on this but um, you, you just can't go wrong with uh, uh, beaver caster as an attractant so um, you know keep those questions coming to us email them to us um, that kind of thing and um, just while I'm talking about that I know people hit me on messenger all the time and I, and I do the best I can to answer those and some and the other day I think I had uh, three or four different people messaging me, and I know I probably messed that up. Um, so anyways, I know I got some of the answer, and maybe I missed one of you, but uh, anyways, I'm doing the best I can and, and getting back to everyone. So anyways, keep the questions coming, and we'll uh, try to get them answered on the show. You rolling? We're nearing the end of the trap line, but there's a little bit of light. <laughs> Got a gray fox back here. After all that rain, set was right here on the road. This is this is the story of the day, right here. Yeah. Well, was in the the trap bed's full of water. It just holes. quit raining about a half hour ago. 
We, I mean, I think there's seven or eight possums today and a raccoon so far, and then Justin cut this gray. I mean, it's been dismal. So. Uh, yeah, that's part of trapping. Yep. It's Try and clean it up as we go along to get these things back in working good condition so we can connect here in the next few days before we leave. Right. Yeah, we got four more check days, so. Take care of him and remake it. And we got just a few more sets to check and then we'll eat some lunch and set a few more. Yep. All right, <clears throat> the end of check day four. This is gonna be the end of it. The sun was coming out at one very small point and then it started raining again. So as you can see, we're eating lunch in the truck at <laughs> 151 and um, we're gonna plan on setting, setting more traps, but. I don't think uh, that's probably really a good idea. So the day total was I don't lost track seven or eight possums, <laughs> one raccoon, and um, that gray fox there just a few minutes ago. That that was it, and a bunch of water. Wa yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, washed out traps. So tomorrow will be a big maintenance day to get stuff back up to speed for the rest of the week. So one thing we're real worried about too is uh, it's supposed to cool down quite a bit and get below freezing. So we got to really pay attention and keep an eye on these sets that are already filled in with water. Yeah, we haven't used any buckwheat holes or anything, so everything's basically mud. So we'll be pulling pulling traps out of the beds, buckwheat hauling them in. And uh, if they got bait there, we're not going to worry about the bait. Um, we may add a little more um, um, lure and then definitely add some more urine, but uh, we don't need to replace bait. So see what happens. Yep. Yeah. All right, just just kind of a follow up on the show that you just saw, um, you know, just the reality of trapping, and I say that all the time, and I don't care who is trapping, they have days like this. You know, a lot of them, you know, if they're doing a video or whatever, they'll pass over it, and they don't, they don't, they don't really address it. So, you know, we, we pride ourselves in the reality of the trap line, and that's why we show the trap line diary, so that, um, you know, all trappers that watch this show can relate to what we're doing and what we're going through. No one sets out traps in the, with the intention of catching a, a whole bunch of possums, or no one sets a trap line knowing that they're going to deal with, you know, days of rain. They all, everyone knows that, but I mean that you know that we all have to deal with that, and we all have to fight that, and we all have to make the best of it. I guess I was at the at the NTA in Illinois, and one of the lure manufacturers said, you know, my lure or my bait just doesn't catch possums, and and. Um, I don't care who you are, or what you're making, or what kind of attractant you're making. You will catch you you are going to catch possums if they come by, and they smell your set. They're gonna you're gonna catch them. It doesn't matter if you're using grape jelly, or peanut butter, or sardines, or or good top quality uh, bait and lure. You will catch possums if they come by. Um, I've been doing this now for over 40 years, and I there's there's just no such thing out there that uh, is going to avoid possums so you know the only way to avoid possums is not to be where possums are at and if you um, generally when we're down south in that deep forest where there, there are not a lot of possums and it's something that typically we don't have to deal with but uh, up here in this farm country you know if you're further out in the field you're away from the the cover of the edge uh, that will definitely cut your possum catch down I think it's a little you know the, the coyotes certainly run out there too um, but I think you're better off putting up with some um, possum catch uh, in order to um, uh, catch the coyotes and the fox, uh, bobcats. Um, the, uh, uh, another thing to um, compensate for the possum catch um, is to always have multiple sets, uh, at least two sets per location. Um, rarely can I say that, uh, you know, caught a double on possums right next to each other. Uh, normally if you catch a possum, you're going to catch one. And then the other set's still working, and you know you may catch a uh, coyote or a fox in that set. So, um, like I said, there there's no attractant out there that will avoid possums. It's just something all of us got to deal with. If, if there are possums in the area that we're trapping, and um, you know it's just the reality of trapping. So, uh, uh, I just kind of wanted to throw that in here at the end of the show. Um, it kind of struck me at the national when I heard that line, and, and uh, anyways, that's uh, uh, I kind of wanted to address that too. So. Hope you enjoyed the episode, uh, despite our lackluster catch. Hey guys, thanks for watching. We have the new Hoosier Trapper Supply catalogs. 
go ahead and visit us online at hoosiertrappersupply.com and uh, request one there or you can just phone us here at the shop and uh, we'll be glad to get you one and uh, if you're online go ahead and register with us and we'll get you a newsletter and that will have anything from trapping updates that are going on with us here at the shop as far as products show updates um, every now and then Charlie's blog has a link on there so and uh, we're going to be running product specials as well through there so make sure you get online sign up for that newsletter and register with us also I want to bring everyone up to speed with um, kind of a side project we've been doing it's called the fur shed series and it runs year round we're going to keep it rolling um, there's no set date or time when these things come out anytime we feel like there's a uh, a trick or a tip or something that could help someone out uh, we'll go ahead and upload that right here on YouTube so make sure you keep your eyes peeled for that and basically what that shows about is the fur shed anything inside or around um, that as far as fur handling the trap prep and modifications things that aren't necessarily dealt with in the field when you're trapping will be right there in the fur shed series so make sure you follow us and uh, keep up with that. And while we're at it, let's go ahead and talk about the um, social media. Follow us online. We are on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. The list goes on. Find us. We're on there. We'll see you next time. Join us on September 1st for the next episode of Who's Your Trapper Outdoors. <laughs>